be a more intelligent set of pirating users. Um, and this, this one actually supports lots of different uh, DRMs, and it, but it's more specific towards each application. So each time an application comes out, this guy has to go and uh, update his templates for what needs to be patched. <clears throat> so making pirate lives harder. Uh, basically, Google has given us a bunch of tools, so we should just make sure we're using them. The number one tool is programming. If you don't obfuscate your code, you're basically just giving away information to all the reversers. I have an example coming up, but it's essentially, uh, if you don't obfuscate anything, then they're gonna be looking at it as if it was a debug build almost. You know, your variable names are still gonna be there, your line names are still gonna be there, uh, all your extra code that you're not actually using is still gonna be in there. So this not only helps like an end user, because you're gonna minimize the size of your APK, you're gonna obfuscate your code, just make it run a little faster, uh, but you're also making it a lot easier for reverse engineers to find things. Uh, I believe ProGuard is turned on by default now in the latest SDK, uh, but if it's not on your project, you should definitely enable it. Uh, another one is shit clean code. I mean, this this should, I mean, you, you would think that this is just a given, but you, you'll see lots of people shipping things with, there's lots of debug files in there. If you have something that's basically saying like, oh, well, you know, I have lots of log cat statements, but I wrapped it in a function that said, if it's not a debug build, then don't display this. So it's really easy to patch that and say, well, if it's not a debug build, I don't care. Just output these messages anyway. And then you're just displaying information to the reverse engineer like, well, I'm gonna save it to this file with this type of key. And those are all things that usually help your developers and whatnot. But this is definitely something that helps the reverse engineer. Anything that's gonna help those developers, it usually helps reverse engineers figure out what those developers were doing. So I've seen lots of code where uh, even malware authors end up doing this. They program their code, and they obfuscate it, but they leave in all their debug statements, so you're like, oh man, this class is named A, all the variable names are named A, B, C, and there's no way I know what any of this is doing, but then they left in a log statement that was drop malicious payload now, connect to server X, Y, Z, and you're like, okay, well, I guess I don't really need to look at that code much because they're telling me exactly what they're doing. Uh, and so this is an example. This is a really bad registered function. Uh, it probably could have been written on one line. Basically, I'm just looking, what's my shared preferences? Have I registered this? Uh, give me the default value of false. If it was registered, return true. If it wasn't, return false. And if you look in box modeling, we box model this file and we look at the smiley code, uh, and we actually try and look at this as it's not programmed. It's really easy to figure out what's going on. And this is a really easy function, so even if it was programmed, it's not too difficult. Basically we see, okay, so the method is, is registered. That'd be really easy for someone to just grab through and go, I want a registration algorithm. Let me look for a registration. Uh, we also have the line numbers. So this basically can make it really easy for someone to just reverse engineer and say, um, you know, what is this person actually writing in Java? You basically reverse engineer this into exactly these statements all go to one line in Java. These statements all go to another and another. And these are two extra lines. Uh, we're also leaving in basically the local variable names, which we used. So when someone's reverse engineering your application, they know I named something shared preferences. They also know I named something is registered. So if we look back at that code, I named it is registered and shared preferences. So we're just giving away all this information for free. So this is a really easy way for a reverse engineer to look at your application and go, I want secret key. If you prep for secret key, usually something pops up or, you know, I want high score, because I want to cheat at your game and I want to look for the high score, rep for high score. And usually it pops up because people just don't obfuscate their code. <laughs> so the same thing, then obfuscated. You can see that we've dropped all the line numbers, we've dropped the local variable names. The code is still the same, uh, but we're just giving, we're not including those hints to a reverse engineer. And also we see that the uh, function name has just been converted to A, so it's no longer called is registered. So it might be a little bit I mean, you could still look for the strings of registration or registered, but at the same time, it's a little bit more difficult. And if you do this on a huge code base, it's actually gonna make it a lot more difficult to figure out what's going on, because you're gonna have function A calling function A from class B, calling function C from class D, and it's just a big mess that's not fun to work with. And like I said, you can see that we no longer have those local variable names, and definitely the big win is just the function is no longer named what the function is. Uh, the next step is usually just trying to reduce those footholds. Like, we don't want to give away free information. Uh, so 
a, a lot of things that I've seen are, um, as a reverse engineer or as someone who's trying to attack an application, uh, you look for those, those telltale signs that something didn't work. Like, let's say you have a user entering a key on a, uh, on a form, and then you click it and it says, invalid key. First thing they're gonna go for is go, where's invalid key at? If you don't fail immediately, you don't have that, you know, if this, then that branch that basically says, like, if it was good, go here. If it was bad, go here. If you don't have that immediately apparent to uh, the reverser, it makes it a little bit harder to see, like, well, you know, this is a million line application. Where do I actually want to look? If it just pops up with invalid key, first thing they're going to look for is where's invalid key displayed? If it's like on an on click event of, you know, check registration serial, that's the first thing they're going to look for. They're going to say, where does this actual key press get logged, and what is it actually uh, evaluating for that? So being able to put something maybe in like a simple game of, okay, I'll accept your registration code, but then in the middle of level one, I'm going to see if it worked, and then bail out. A lot of reverse engineers end up getting hit with that one, because they're saying, okay, cool, I got a valid key, and I loaded the first game, and I played two seconds of it, and it worked. Or I've seen people do this with, uh, in the middle of a file save. So you're saving your progress of a game. The reverser doesn't really care about your game, so they're not playing your game, they're not trying to get a high score, and if you've disabled the actual save feature because it wasn't registered properly, you're gonna have a lot of people who are trying to pirate a game, they're gonna get frustrated, maybe they're gonna be like, all right, whatever, I'll just actually buy the game because this guy can't reverse engineer it, and I can't figure it out. Um, another interesting thing is when you're throwing errors, so if they say, like, run this in an emulator, and they blocked all outside internet contact, and it's talking to your licensing server, a lot of people end up just throwing errors, and this is a telltale sign again of, well, I'm gonna look for where it's gonna print a stack trace, uh, and people just leave that stuff in there. So this is an example of log leaking. Uh, I'm just trying to contact my own server. This doesn't exist, so I got a weird error. Uh, basically, you know, you can't do this. This isn't a get, you gotta try to post. Uh, but basically, uh, this is gonna give someone a stack trace of where to look at. This is uh, a method that I'm using. It's just basically doing absolutely nothing but this is just the normal things that Eclipse are gonna drop into your code already. So I might not ever care if the malformed URL exception gets thrown or an IO exception, so I'm not catching that as a developer. And I just left this in because whatever, I'm just trying to be a little lazy, get this out the door, I gotta fix that bug real fast. Um, and then so what might happen to a reverse engineer who's looking at it is if I disable strizzeri.com or if I just disable the internet, this exception is gonna be thrown and now I know exactly where something's happening. So we can see that this was getting called inside this function name at this line, which if we haven't programmed it, this line is actually going to tell me exactly where to look in the actual Foxmami code. And then we can see that it was run inside the detector activity, what line that was executed at, and then this is actually meaning that it's inside of a thread and that it was being run as a thread. <clears throat> so the other uh, interesting thing that I've seen a few times, and this is an interesting way to try and combat reverse engineers, is storing things on a server. So let's say you know you contact Google's LDL server. They say, yes, this is authenticated. They give you that nuance back. And you're basically gonna contact your own server and say, hey, here's, the, here's, a, here's a valid request that came from uh, Google. What can I do now with this? And your server can then say, okay, well, you know, you're, you're gonna be playing level three. So here's the decryption key for level three. So maybe you decrypt all, or you encrypt all your assets on the actual package. So this means that someone, in order to break this, need to then have a valid, actual, legitimate copy of the game, uh, and then they're gonna have to go through, say, like maybe every level to get the decryption keys, then they're gonna actually have to modify the application so that you're not actually doing that encryption, or that you're actually, uh, you know, the, the encryption keys are gonna be in the application instead of contacting your server. Because that's gonna be really funky if a reverse engineer basically says, you know, is, is throwing up the same key to your server every time. You should be able to log that, you should be able to find that, and see that, wow, you know, 900 of my users are all using the same one-time value that they're supposed to be getting from Google. Like, that's really weird. Maybe I should just block this value on the server and never let any of them play again. So that'd be a really easy way to catch people who are using like a pirated version uh, and a way to stop them. <clears throat> and but going back to that whole small group, large group, no one in a large group is ever gonna do this because they're just not usually that functionally capable of doing that amount of reverse engineering. You're gonna have to reverse engineer the code, you're gonna have to write Smiley code, probably write some functions that say like, what level are you on? Okay, well then serve up this uh, key. If you're on this level, serve up this key. Or they're gonna have to decrypt all the assets and change your functions so that they don't actually try and do any decryption. Um, <clears throat> a 
A really interesting thing that I saw is 